Hey everyone, welcome to Strange Stories, where we explore near-death experiences and supernatural stories from people who've had a glimpse of the other side. If you enjoy our content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel. Without further ado, let's get to the story of the day. I grew up in Whittier, California and attended Pioneer High School from 1966 to 1970. Mike Brown was a lifelong friend of mine. We grew up playing music and doing things that kids do. Anyway, he ended up in Seattle and I moved in with him and my girlfriend eventually moved in with me and I later married her. I had no idea how many troubles he had with drugs and others. There's a lot to what happened in 1989. He asked for my rifle one day to go hunting and ended up killing himself near Alki Beach just south of Seattle in 1981 and I went to clean up the apartment. That was a difficult ride to take because I had known him since second grade. That night, while rehearsing with the band I was in, I got the news from my wife. I'm filled with remorse because I provided him with the means to send him on his path. He had killed himself in his girlfriend's apartment. It was unusual because something came into the room and hit me so hard that I almost fell over during the practice that night. It felt like an electrical charge and I thought to myself, Oh, it felt like Michael but I had no idea why. I helped clean up the apartment after hearing the news, and three days later, he returned to me at the house I was in, and I'll never forget what I witnessed. He was standing in the corridor with a small light beaming down above his head, and he told me, I'm sorry, Richard. I should have listened to you when it came to Jesus. I guess I tried to tell him about Jesus the day before, but to no avail. He took the 3006 and blew his heart out the back, leaving a mess that I had to clean up. As I already stated, he came to me three days later. His long brown hair was in his face when he spoke to me, and when he moved, I noticed his eyes were gone, as if cut out. It was interesting to witness. He stated to me, Please, Richard, never do this again. This sight will not appeal to you. Then he vanished. For years, I felt guilty about what I did. When I realized that his eyes were gone, I assumed that he had lost his soul and that it was my fault. I was ill. I found out, approximately two years ago, that his parents had donated his eyes. I'd see him in different places now and again, but never get clear enough to establish eye contact. Since that day, I've had awful dreams, felt guilty, and couldn't get it out of my head for years. It put me in the same frame of mind, but I had a family to consider. But Satan and his demons, the dark ones, don't care. Well, if I'd been more confident in God and Jesus, Maybe I could have changed things around, I often think, but it's too late. So time passed and I allowed things to get to me. My wife had friends who liked to play in the snow, so we went there for a while and plunged further and deeper into bad times, not financially, but into the white rather than the light which was all about us at the time. I don't mean in the mountains because once you start, it just keeps getting a hold of you and for me, it dragged me down. Let's just leave it at that but I can only blame myself. I loved her the most, but as you can see, the snow was all around us like a dreadful dream. Any other woman would have replied, let's not do this, honey. It's harmful to our health. I don't want you to catch any infections now, do we? She adds as she hands me a bag of arrows. Things were odd back then. I have to tell you that I was extremely fortunate. I was only able to return because God permitted it. I've been having dreams since 1989 when I took that vacation. I was with my wife, family and friends when we noticed giant frogs, yellow, red and green, eating people. And then black bats flew in over our heads, forming a head with flaming blue eyes on the hillside facing us and speaking to me. So you think you're safe now that you've gone to see him, but you have no idea. You should have stayed with him, but you had to ask and ask again. I always have nightmares about an invasion. I could go on and on about what has happened since 1989. That, however, would take a very long period. So there I was, on the couch, when I noticed that all the sound had vanished. And then, the small light in the living room began to move away from me in a wobbly motion, until it was almost gone. It grew very dark, and then, for reasons I can't describe, an orange color formed all around me, almost as if I were in some location, as if I were in a tunnel or between the ground and the sky, but not both. 
Then the light began to return. I realized I was in trouble when I began to shift my gaze from the ceiling to the floor, and the light began to approach me and grow larger, then back away, repeating this process over and over. When it got close, it looked like a dark orange with black veins and pulsing. I was praying to God for forgiveness at the same moment. I knew what I was saying, but I was later told that all they heard was a sound I was making of ya 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 ya, which I was repeating non-stop. I was pleading with Jesus and God not to take me. I was doing the jitterbug, the death dance, and flopping around like a fish out of water, convulsing. The light returned, but slower and darker, to an orange color, not white as at first, almost like the sun, and then I saw it was pulsing like a pulse, or breathing, or something like that. Come and leave. Back and each time larger than before, till it seemed as if the sun had come down to earth. This happened as I was sitting on the couch. Then I saw myself flopping like a fish out of water, extremely rapidly. Just me, no one around me yet, and all of a sudden, I was staring down on myself through my apartment ceiling. It was on Piccadilly Lane that I realized I was in outer space, attempting to steady myself as if underwater. I recall my hair swaying side to side as I looked around. I first spotted myself as a silhouette against the lights, unconcerned for a second. The sensation was more akin to diving so deep that everything seemed to be a dream. At first, I was like a dark figure against the light. When the light returned, I was in limbo wondering how that could be. I was seeing myself from somewhere else, like if in a movie, but this was no movie. It was real. I noticed what appeared to be shooting stars. They were so white and dazzling that they were stunning. Millions of them flashed by all around me, none of them striking me, but all of them coming dangerously close. Then I spotted one, way out in space, so high it appeared small. Then it came slowly, but this one was colorful, and I knew it was mine. Then I realized that all of these shooting stars weren't really stars at all, but rather transportation spheres for all the souls traveling through like me. I suppose the first light that grew like the sun was mine for some reason. I believe it transported me to space because the one with the colors coming towards me was the real deal. That is, the one sphere that would lead me to him. Again, there was no sound, yet I could feel but not hear. Back in the living room, I saw myself flailing around like a fish out of water. When I looked up again, the transporter sphere was approaching closer and turning orange again. As it got closer to me, it appeared like a burning chariot. Ya yeah, ya yeah, ya. Yeah. I remember everything like it was yesterday. I truly need some assistance since I can't seem to get it out of my thoughts. But I don't want to forget it. I'm having a people problem right now. I have mixed feelings about them. That's not good. I've been holding this in for far too long. Who knows, maybe this will be useful to someone. In any case, the chariot grew like the sun and came to touch the earth again. And as I raised my left arm as if to block it, I felt warmth from it but not burning. And I saw the flames, like the sun, so huge and gigantic, and then each flame became wings, and the wings revealed a figure in the center everywhere I looked. At the same moment, I was looking in the mirror and begging to God and Jesus, Please do not bring me. I have a family, and I apologize for approaching you in this manner, again and over, crying and pleading to go out and back to my room. Sometimes I wonder why I would want to return. I had the opportunity to go with God. But I have to admit that I was so determined to return that I was allowed. That whole free will issue. I just think I got lucky, as if it was in my time. When the sphere appeared, I saw myself on the floor once more. I'm talking about the spirit part of me, the second person, the one asking and begging God and Jesus for forgiveness. It was all orange around me. It was like a sunset, with the dark earth below and the sky above and I was under so much pressure, like I was at the bottom of the sea, that I couldn't look up to see him, not even his feet, but I knew it was him. And again, no sound, just me wailing and pleading and all those sinners' feelings. I saw myself strolling from side to side, moving in circles, 
trying to elevate my head to look, like a puppy trying to please his owner after being scolded. But this was far worse. Again, the sphere resembled the sun descending to touch the earth. Light in the sun's rays. The wings then revealed their figures, both men and women, and they were stunning. Then they shifted, half to the left, half to the right. And even though I was still on the orange stone floor that looked like marble and the pressure was so severe, I was able to gaze up at his feet. Now I'm starting to stand up. I was able to look up and the angels had transformed into massive mountains on each side of him after moving from side to side. That's when I noticed him. I felt like I was the size of a grasshopper at first. They were taller than me and looked down at me. They were amazing and had millions of supporters. He was dressed in a white or cream gown and a maroon or purple robe, just like the others, and he held out his hands and said something to me that I couldn't understand. Something I still regret to this day, but if I hadn't heard him, I might not be writing this. This was between two mountains, and the mountains on both sides of him were massive, and it was like a sunset was behind him, and the sky was getting dark, but there was still enough light to see them. He had long dark hair and a gentle loving expression on his face. He was kind, yet the force I felt from them was incredible. I recall every single face. They had a melancholy expression on their faces and were looking at each other. I'm not sure if it was Jesus or Peter saying something, but I believe it was Jesus and Peter was on his right. That's how I was taught at least. Then something happened. I saw myself pleading for forgiveness and falling backwards. There was nothing evil in sight. I was simply someone who was terrified of death. It seemed like everything happened so quickly, but it appeared to last forever. I don't believe I or anyone else goes to heaven at first. I appear to be on the outside looking in, much like a gate. My wife hit me in the back harder than I ever imagined she could hit me with a loud boom. Then I was back on the couch, staring up at my wife, and I felt like a kid who had just been caught doing something wrong. She was yelling at me, furious. I was overjoyed to hear and meet her. And there was this dude standing behind her. He had silver hair, a silver crown, and what appeared to be a knight's armor made of silver, bushy eyebrows, and he shimmered with white light. I'll never forget his expression. He felt angry, sad, and disappointed similar to how a parent scolds his son or daughter. He turned to the left, shook his head, and departed. For years, I didn't say anything except to my wife and father, and Satan has been haunting me ever since. I try to go to church and then start hearing voices, curses and nightmares so vivid that I couldn't sleep and would drink. In the end, I lost my family. I believe they had to send me back because I saw my face and body melting away like a candle and I returned to hell like a cartoon character being sucked down some pipe or gateway back to my living room. But who am I to go to them in that manner and be allowed to return? I caused some harm to myself. I suppose you have to live and learn, but that was a difficult lesson. I believe that if everyone had the opportunity to go through anything like that, there would be no one hurting each other. And based on what I witnessed, all of those people gave me hope. Because I know I have to return to where I was before, and maybe this time I'll get it right. This truly happened, and I know you won't believe me. But that's okay because when I see someone on the news killed in an accident, or hear someone shot or dying from anything, I understand what they're going through. I pray for them, but those who are killing, the suicide bombers and executioners, have no concept of what they're doing to themselves. To be honest, I'm not a good Christian, but I think I am. After all, I did see him. And I'm sorry if you all felt or thought that way. Why can this guy see him like that, but not any of us who serve him like that? That's what I'm thinking. All I want to do is share this with everyone. I was wondering whether I was on the sofa, the first person or the flesh, and in space at the same moment. If my body was battling for its life and my spirit, was pleading with God, and I recall asking Jesus to help me and no one else. Well, I must confess that I want to go back and finish it. I'd like to return, but hopefully not for a long time. Life looks different to me now. I wish I hadn't taken the trip, but I'm just a happy regular guy who wishes he had a time machine.